Hey, this is Matt George, host of the Locked on Kings podcast. Before I play for you this full uncut version of Monty McNair's post-trade deadline press conference from earlier this Saturday, I want to make sure you know that today's podcast still is coming later on after the Kings play the Wizards in Washington, game one of a three-game Eastern Conference road trip. I'll have a full post-game podcast for you. How will Demontis Sabonis, De'Aaron Fox, and these new look Kings uh, look in their second game together, including some fresh new faces? Will we see Dante DiVincenzo and company for the first time tonight. Lots of questions to be answered. Whatever happens, we will talk about it on tonight's podcast. So I hope you'll join me for that. And then on tomorrow's Locked on Kings podcast, even though it's Super Bowl Sunday, I will have a interview for you before the game. I'm going to have a crossover with the Locked on Pistons podcast. Koo and I will talk about the Marvin Bagley trade and he'll tell us a little bit about Josh Jackson, Trey Lyles uh, that the Kings got from the Pistons in that deal. So without any further ado, I hope you'll join me later on for that but as for right now here is monty mcnair's press conference from the sacramento kings practice facility thanks everyone for uh for joining uh thank you for your patience uh, while we were waiting for these trades to clear so i can speak to you guys um first just want to welcome dante josh trey and uh and also uh rethink uh, domas justin and jeremy who you guys got to talk to the other night as well uh, we're excited to bring them aboard. Um, I want to thank Buddy, uh, Marvin, Tyrese, Jemias, Robert, Robert, and uh, Tristan. Got it. Um, you know, for their contributions, we certainly wish them the best going forward. Um, some thank yous to uh, my front office team, Wes, Ken, Phil, Paul. Uh, Joe Dumars, our scouts, our analysts, um, and the rest of our support staff for their tireless work, um, you know, not just this past week, but the past couple months. Um, truly a team effort, and I really appreciate it. Um, we're excited to have uh, this new group of guys join us, um, some that we saw the other night already. Domas, uh, two-time All-Star, 25, um, incredible skill set, versatility, passing. Rebounding, um, he can really do it all on the floor. We're excited to see him continue with us. Um, Justin, an athletic wing, um, veteran uh, who's been around a lot of winning organizations. We're excited for what he's going to bring. Um, Jeremy, uh, versatile scorer, size, shooting, um, can play both ends of the floor. Uh, Dante, a hard-nosed uh, athletic defender, uh, offensively versatile, uh, and a great team player. Uh, Josh, um, a versatile and, and athletic defender, uh, can guard multiple positions, get up and down the floor. And Trey certainly brings size, shooting, uh, and basketball acumen. So uh, we're excited to see these guys get on the floor um, tonight. When we first kind of met as a group, um, I guess, man, almost 18 months ago now, um, you know, I said we want to be aggressive but patient. We need to be disciplined um, and we'll be strategic while building out the talent base here. Um, but when the opportunity presented itself that we would take a swing. And um, I think we've seen both deadlines. We've seen uh, a little bit of the discipline and now we've seen a little bit of the aggression. Um, we were able to keep all of our picks, add flexibility going forward and do that while acquiring a two-time All-Star uh, and adding more talent uh, around the rest of our roster, um, which will allow us to continue to build this team um, out going forward starting this summer and, and into next season. So we're very excited um, for the result there. Um, in addition to Domas, who, who is, is a two-time All-Star, we got some guys that we've been targeting uh, for a while, guys that we think fit our culture and what we're trying to build here in Sacramento. So um, we're excited to have them join as well. Um, Look, our, our goal is to improve the team, not just now, but, but into next season and beyond. Uh, add players who, uh, who will help us, but will be with us as we continue to grow this team um, into the future. So I, I certainly can't wait uh, to see everyone. We, we got half of them on the floor the other night. We got the other half coming tonight. I'm really excited. And uh, with that, I'll take questions. Yeah, Moni, um, I think a lot of times your patients look like inactivity. And um, so you, you've you been under a lot of pressure, it seems like, especially from the outside. Uh, but just how good did it feel for that first game to not only see the fan response, 
but then to have the comments from guys like Domas uh, in post saying that, you know, he thinks he's found his basketball home. Yeah, be, being disciplined is tough sometimes. Um, and we, we knew we wanted uh, to get this thing back to the playoffs. It's our stated goal. Um, but we also um, need to wait for the right opportunity. And um, it certainly is nice when the first game goes like that. We hope, uh, we hope the second and third and subsequent games go just as well. Um, and certainly, I think adding guys uh, like Domas, whose comments Justin spoke to the fans after the game, uh, Jeremy as well, that, um, that are not just uh, good players, but guys who are excited to be here in Sacramento. Um, and I think we saw certainly Domas's smile uh, post game ear to ear. And uh, that's great to see. And that's a big part of it. Hey, Monty, how's it going? Hey. Um, w when you look at the, the Fox bonus pairing, those two obviously very skilled young players, how, how do you feel that they complement each other? Well, I would say first, like, Pace. We want to run, and we all know Foxy's speed, um, fastest player in the league, and what he brings. But but playing with pace is more about than just is about more than just running up and down the floor. And one of the big things is getting a rebound and getting it out quickly. And Domas is one of the best rebounders in the league. He can push it himself, like we saw Wednesday night. Uh, he can get it to Foxy and let him go. And then we've got now you know more and more wings and and forwards that could run with those guys. So um, I think that's one huge way they complement each other. And then we saw in the half court just the, uh, you know, we all know what Foxy can do with his speed to distort a defense and, and kind of play make for others. But uh, Domas's passing ability and just, just gravity uh, helps not just De'Aaron, but the rest of the guys as well. So uh, hopefully we'll see more of that. And then with Dante, it's a guy you guys obviously been looking at for some time. And he, he had a tough injury he's coming back from, and he was in and out of the rotation a little bit there. Um, what, what are you hoping he can bring to the team, and how is that ankle recovering from that, from that injury last year? Yeah, Dante is uh, certainly somebody we've, we've targeted for a while. Um, and we, we're very excited to, to, uh, to finally bring him into the organization. And, um, you know, I think we've already seen since he's come back, um, you know, he's progressing well and uh, starting to have some, some bigger and bigger games. And, you know, this is a guy who was starting in the, the playoffs last year for the eventual champion. So uh, we know what he can do on the floor. Um, we're excited to see him come in and do it here for, uh, in a Kings uniform finally. Hey, what's up, Money? Um, when you look at moving a piece like Ty, who was your first draft pick and obviously had big hopes for, um, how much does this feel like a roll of the dice or even a gamble from the organization standpoint? Yeah, look, Ty's a, um, a fantastic player, as we all know, but um, certainly a fantastic person uh, as well. And, um, you know, in this league, it's, it's tough. And we, we know we have to give up talent to get talent. Um, and uh, any, any, any move uh, can be viewed as a roll of the dice, but our job is to to make those decisions that we think put us in the best place to succeed going forward. And uh, bringing in a two-time All-Star who's 25, we think uh, will be with us, not just in the short term, but we hope has a long future here in Sacramento. Um, as long as, uh, sorry, in addition to two other guys who have, are proven winners in this league, um, that opportunity was something we couldn't pass on. And then, you know, obviously your job has to put a a successful product on the floor um, that coupled with you know pandemic stuff fan attendance was dipping how much is that kind of factored into when you make a decision like this I think for us we've stated our goal which is which is to to not just get to the playoffs but then stay there but we want to do that as quickly as possible and um, you know somebody like Domas who's who's been on an all-star team twice um, but is still at an age where he can be a part of not just the team that gets us to the playoffs, but the team that allows us to win a round and then another round and be a part of, of hopefully a long playoff, um, you know, run here. That's, you know, to us, that's huge. And, um, you know, he's, he's somebody that, um, you know, can, can really do so much on the court and not just make our team better because of what he does, but his teammates better because of what he does. So, uh, we're really excited to, to see him bring that here. Hey, Monty, Chris Tavares. Um, the play-in tournament, you guys are just on the outside looking in right now, 25 games left. Is is that the immediate goal, or is it a push all the way to the full-on big playoff tournament? Yeah, Chris, I think uh, there, there's only so many opportunities throughout the 
the NBA calendar to to make impact moves, and the trade deadline is certainly one of the biggest ones. So uh, th this move is not just about now. It's about now and the future. Um, and, and like I've said, we, we added uh, multiple guys who are going to help us now, certainly, but will be a part of our future going forward. And um, certainly we want to win. We have 25 games left. We want to we want to win those, and if uh, the, the cards fall that, that put us in the play-in tournament, we'll try to win a game or two there and, and uh, get into the final eight. But um, this is also about next year and the year after and putting ourselves in a position where um, we will continue to not just be in the playoffs but compete there uh, year in and year out, continue to grow this thing. So, um, you know, this was, this was about a, a multi-year um, kind of improvement and um, you know certainly we hope we hope the dividends start paying off right now but this is not just about the next two months good morning Monty um, I know you're real good at math I want to ask you about history though this this franchise made a move like 24 years ago to, to get Chris Weber uh, kind of transformed things around here and I, I wonder if you see those those parallels with this move for, for Domas and and um, and also whether you have any what where's your level of confidence that you'll be able to, to keep him here long term and and you know he has truly maybe found a new home well to answer your second question first um, you know I think his comments after the game were awesome and uh, you know getting it not just a fantastic player but a fantastic player who wants to uh, to build a home here and, and be a part of something special here is, is fantastic. Um, and to your first question, um, you know, certainly there's a fantastic history of, of skilled passing big men in this organization, uh, Vlade, uh, Chris Weber, among many others. So, um, you know, I hope Domas continues to carry that torch. We saw a little bit of it, of it Wednesday, and um, he can do just so much on the court. Um, like I said, that just not, not just helps us because of his scoring and, and everything, but what he does for – for the rest of his teammates. Um, you know, I think we saw Chemezi have, I don't know if he had like five dunks in the first quarter or something. He should have had six, but I told him, you got up too high, man. You hit the ball again uh, above the rim, but that's what he does. He, make, he makes his teammates better. Um, he brings toughness, he brings leadership, he brings all those things. And, um, you know, certainly there's been guys in this organization that have done that in the past and we hope he's the next one. Yeah, Monty, you talked about bringing guys in that fit your culture. Um, and now that we're finally seeing a roster that is a lot of uh, decisions from your regime rather than some carryovers, what, how would you describe that culture that you feel like you're trying to build here? Yeah, we want, uh, you know, competitors, um, toughness. Uh, we certainly know that, as we've talked about in the past, we need to continue to improve our rebounding and defense. Um, and I think all these guys that um, we brought in are not just – Great players, good talents, all that type of stuff, but guys who uh, are going to fit into the to that type of culture that we're trying to build here. Monty, uh, Chris Biederman, Sacramento B. Nice to meet you. Nice um, to you. You'd mentioned not trading any draft picks, and, and I'm curious how you sort of struck that balance and, and what the conversations were like, given that you do want to improve now and maybe moving some of those picks could have helped you uh, improve now and just sort of what, what those discussions were like. Yeah, we're we're always trying to just see like how we can de you know deploy our um, you know our, our picks, our uh, flexibility in the future, and all those things to add talent. And so it's always a balance. I think for us, uh, in this case, we were able to actually net out a, a plus pick uh, between the two trades um, with a future second round pick. And um, you know, obviously, we had to give up um, some good things to get the things that we brought in. But we did it in a way where. Um, now we can use our picks and that flexibility starting this summer to continue uh, to improve the team and, and add the talent uh, around the guys that we have. So uh, it just, you know, just so happened that this time there was no, no picks. We were able to keep them. But uh, if the opportunity presents itself down the line, we'll, we'll be aggressive to go use those uh, when the time comes. So uh, it was really just a matter of happenstance at this point. Money, the, uh, the trade that you made to get Domas, um, just – how quickly did that come together? Uh, because it, it was one that we had heard, you know, rumors of you guys had interest in him, but it seemed like it did come together quickly at the end. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll just take a step back and say that, you know, obviously we see the flurry of moves in deadline week, uh, but it's not like uh, the other 29 teams and us are, you know, starting on Monday. This is a, this is a really a process that doesn't, that never stops. We, we have conversations in the summer, um, about about players that we think could help us. Um, sorry, 
Is that me? We're good? Okay. Um, <clears throat> we have, uh, you know, really starting in December, I would say, is when, is when things pick up again. Um, you know, that's when free agents can be traded, guys that have signed over the summer, things like that. Um, and really it's like a two-month process into, um, into deadline week. So, um, you know, we do our due diligence. Um, certainly things tend to come together at the end, but, um, but cert you know, certainly something that we spend a, a lot of time on preparing. Monty, kind of following up on that, just when you look at the way the landscape has shifted in the NBA because of the trade deadline and you know everything kind of leading up to that, how different or unexpected were some of these moves that were made, not only from just the Kings organizational standpoint, but even throughout the landscape of the NBA? Uh, did it kind of fall in line with what you were thinking overall? I I've given up trying to predict what's going to happen. Um, some years you think it's going to be slow and it's – crazy and some years you think the opposite and sometimes we're right so we don't you know it's fun to kind of prognosticate on what's going to happen but um you know we, we do the same process every time we got to pre be prepared because we don't know what's going to be thrown at us I've had I've been in trade deadline rooms with 30 minutes left where something came completely out of left field that would be franchise altering you just have to be prepared for whatever that is and so um we do we do our diligence we we start prepping on uh, the, the targets that we want to look at uh, starting day one of the regular season, really in the preseason. Uh, and, we, and like I said to, to James, this carries over from the summer and previous years. This is not um, a static process. So, um, you know, it's uh, certainly there were, there were some fireworks around the NBA. Um, and, uh, but for us, we're just focused on what we think makes us better, and we think we did that. Uh, Monty, Lindsay Polaris from Fox 40. Um, I know Rashawn Holmes was the subject of a lot of trade rumors. How do you see him fitting in now with the team, especially with the addition of Domas? Yeah, no, Rashawn's a fantastic player. Um, somebody we've seen uh, just with his energy and his skill set, find ways to help his team win over and over. Um, and, you know, Alvin and, and the rest of our coaching staff are going to be creative to find ways to get our best players on the floor in situations that, that help the team win. And uh, Rashawn's done that throughout his career in a variety of different roles. And uh, whether it's, you know, offensively, defensively, scoring, rebounding, um, Rashawn is a winner and he's going to find a way to help us. Hey, Monty, Matt George, ABC 10. Uh, De'Aaron Fox looked noticeably relieved and almost refreshed playing alongside Sabonis. How much of this decision was trying to get him a, a front court partner? And was he not necessarily involved in the decision, but was Sabonis a request or a player that he suggested might be a, a good guy to play with? De'Aaron's um, De awesome. I think we've seen what De'Aaron can do. Player of the week, I think twice last year. Um, but Domas is certainly somebody we, we've we've targeted for a while, and uh, we think his skill set complements De'Aaron. De'Aaron's skill set complements him, uh, and like I said, Domas's skill set complements just about everybody. Um, he might even be able to get me some open shots out there. So, um, you know, we're excited to see those two guys together. Um, you know, for hopefully more of what we saw Wednesday night. As soon as the trade was done, was that? Other teams didn't know that Halliburton was available. I mean, you were shopping all of your players for the entirety of, of like the six weeks, eight weeks building up to the the uh, the trade deadline, right? Yeah, I would uh, maybe don't believe everything that's 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 out there, um, but yeah, no, I think look, we do our due diligence. Anytime there's a player that we think can help us, we go kick the tires on that player. Uh, and Domas as a you know, is a very unique player in that he's, like I've said, a multi-time all-star and still uh, at really like a, almost a pre-prime age um, at 25. So, um, you know, there's not a lot of guys that, that fit that bucket. And, um, you know, we, we were excited to be able to bring him in. Money, where, where do things stand with, with Alvin and, and sort of, you know, looking beyond this, few, uh, this season and um, how, how you feel about the job he's done? and maybe potentially removing the interim label or not? Yeah, no, it's Alvin's, uh, you know, like I said, he's been creative in trying to figure out ways to, to get, uh, you know, our, our, our team, you know, playing better. We've, we've seen some, some strides, and uh, now he's got a task to incorporate six new guys uh, into the fold, and um, certainly Wednesday night with, with half of them in there on, on very little practice time, 
uh, was fun to see. And so uh, Alvin's been around the league. He's, he's been seeing so many situations. So I uh, have no doubt he's going to get these guys ready for the next 25. Monty, just how do you look at Josh Jackson uh, as someone you picked up? I mean, obviously he was in Fox's class, taken ahead of him, and here he is on his fifth team, uh, expiring contract. But what do you just kind of see his growth, his development, and the situation that you guys have him here? Josh has kind of come into his own a little bit lately, and and kind of kind of found his his niche in the league, I think. And he's just such an incredible athlete and defender, um, and and really like offensively still um, still growing and, and showing his versatility there, but. I think you know he hangs his hat on the defensive end, and he's got the the athleticism, length, and uh, kind of tenacity to to guard multiple positions. So I think that's um, you know kind of what he hangs his hat on, and what we hope to see with us. Monty, I know a lot of the analytics stuff is is kind of viewed as like proprietary information, but I'm wondering. Like, if you can share anything, like, in terms of, of the way you've analyzed um, this group and, and now the new group in, in terms of maybe what you've added. And, um, you know, just talk a little bit about wh what you see as strengths, uh, deficiencies, and, and where you think maybe you've addressed that stuff. Yeah, well, um, I don't think you needed any sort of advanced analytics to, um, to see that the results weren't there so far. So um, not, nothing proprietary there, but... Um, you know, like I said, we know what our stated goal is, um, and we felt that we had to, um, if the opportunity presented itself, that we would that we would go and try and improve the team. And um, with these two trades, we think we've done that, and um, the stated goal has not changed. Okay, well, we'll just go to Zoom for one question. Tony? Yeah, Monty, uh, actually, I actually have just a couple questions. Uh, the other one just... I'm just looking for a moderate, moderate uh, re response. But the first question, which hasn't been mentioned, um, uh, Trey Lyles, uh, he's bounced around a little bit in the league, but he still has potential. And he probably certainly can probably add something to the mix, to the bowl of what you're trying to do. I just want to get your thoughts on him. And um, I'll follow up with the next question. Trey, Trey brings a very unique skill set. He's um, with incredible size and shooting touch. So um, as we look to, you know, continue to surround, you know, you can never have enough shooting in this league and, and shooting and size together is, is certainly coveted. And I think Trey will bring that kind of unique skill set to the team. Okay. So you, you, you understand what I'm, I'm asking here because um, Jeremy Lamb and uh, uh, Justin Holiday, they are known to be shooters. Um, Probably not at the accuracies of you know a buddy or, or probably uh, Ty, but just you know bringing those two into the fold and, and they're shooting because that was one of the uh, discussions that we had with uh, Alvin the other night about about the shooting. Uh, Jeremy and um, Justin seem like they can fill in that spot, and I think if you can explain that when you were bringing them in, that they could fill that void of the guys going out. Is that correct? For sure, Jeremy uh, and Justin are both proven shooters and scorers in this league. And um, you know, as we look at to to build, you know, De'Aaron, uh, obviously Harrison as well is shooting over forty percent, and and Domas, like you know, shooting is is certainly one of the key skill sets. We'll look to to continue to build around those guys. Um, and I think, as you mentioned with Trey, uh, Justin, and Jeremy as well. Um, you know, those guys are going to be able to, to, to fill that out and, and uh, you know, as much shooting as we can put on the floor, um, you know, still have uh, defenders and toughness and rebounding. Um, that's something we'll look to do certainly around De'Aaron and Domas.